Welcome to IGSS Online Training. I'm Per Fredriksen from Seven Technologies Denmark and I'm here to present IGSS, our SCADA system. This is lesson 8, Creating Templates. In this lesson I'll explain what is a template, how do you create a template in IGSS, and we will focus specifically on the digital templates because they provide the most functionality in our system. We will also talk about the incoming alarms, how do you define these alarm bits and how do you define the alarm bits related to the operator's acknowledgement from IGSS. And finally, I will show you how to create an object from a template in the definition module. When you have a number of process components that share several properties, you should use a template in IGSS. You can uh, create templates for analog, table, counter and digital objects. And of course the real process components or IGSS objects, they may be based on a template. And of course this is our recommendation because you will save a lot of time by basing objects on templates. The objects that you base on a template, they will of course subscribe to any change you go back and make in the template. When you want to create a template, you go into the definition module. You go into the template menu and you click create. You come into this dialog box where you can choose between the four object types that I just mentioned. You give the template a name and uh, as you can see, I've written motor underscore one and I've written it in all caps. This is a recommendation that we say all caps for template names and normal case for object names. Also, I have specified the global area so that I can use this template in the whole configuration. When we look specifically at digital templates, then we have a number of possibilities. First of all, we can define states and commands. We can give them names instead of the initial 012 that we get. We can also, for each state that we have in a digital object, we can define its valid commands. What should the operator be able to do when the object is in this particular state. We can define incoming digital alarms and we can define outgoing alarm acknowledgement. States and commands. When we define states and commands in IGSS, we uh, are able to define any number of states and commands that we want for the digital object and we can assign a name for each of these states and commands. As you can see on this slide, uh, we have two bits set up here in the 2PC area. So that's the state coming from the PLC to the PC or to IGSS. We also have two uh, command bits set here in the uh, field below. That's the from PC area that's the command being sent from IGSS to the PLC. When we have two bits set, it means that we actually have four bit combinations. And initially, we will get 0, 1, 2 and 3 as state names and command names. But we can choose, we can change these in definition. So initially it will say 0, 1, 2, 3 in this box, but I have changed it to off, slow, medium and fast. And correspondingly for the command section, I've said stop, slow, medium and fast. So these are the four commands that the operator can issue on this particular motor template that we are creating. Defining valid commands. When we define the valid commands for a state, we first select the state over here. Here I have selected the slow state. When the motor is in the slow state, I have defined that the operator can only stop the motor or set it to medium speed. And I can also give him a recommended operator action. That's what we call the default command here. So we can say to him, indicate to him in the menu that the medium command is actually the recommended command. This will be bold in the command menu 
in supervise. Of course, defining valid commands will, uh, will allow you to, um, to prevent that the operator sends a wrong command. So only the stop and medium commands will be available when the object is in the slow state. PLC addressing. When we have a template, then what we put into the template is, of course, the general parts of the PLC address. We start out by saying that we have uh, the command atom over here on the edit mapping tab where we specify the PLC address. We have the command atom. It is outgoing, that's the data direction. We specify our driver, that's the uh, S7 driver that we defined in system configuration. And uh, we are on node number one, PLC uh, number one. And we have specified that the command atom is located in data block number 10 in our PLC. So data block number 10. But we haven't specified the word offset and the bit offset because this we will do specifically for each object that we are creating based on this template. If we then move on to the object M1 that is based on this template, on this motor template, then we look at the edit mapping tab again. We have the command atom and all the properties from the template over here are repeated for this object. The only thing that we change is the word offset, the specific word offset for this particular motor. That's the only thing we need to do. So we give it a unique name and we give it a unique PLC address. That's all we need to do from template to object. So if we're looking at uh, four different motors, which are all based on the same, same template, then the PLC addressing would look like this. We have data group 10, that was the common property that we set for the template, and then we make a word offset of one for each of these four motors, so word number one, two, three, and four. Typically, a uh, command in IGSS, by the way, will take up 16 bits in the PLC, so one word. Incoming alarms. Incoming alarms in IGSS uh, is a very central topic, and uh, I'll explain in detail how you do this in IGSS.